welcome. Uh, just wait for people to tune in. This is Facebook Live at Raven Mystic Facebook page. I am Cassandra Raven and this is Max Raven. Hello everybody. Welcome. Thank you for watching. Um, so we've got an exciting, uh, exciting little portion for you tonight. Um, and we've got some little different things to look at. It's going to be good because we've got lots of different stories to share with you um, involving this amazing location that we're at. I can't wait to tell you about this. Um, but before we do that, um, we have to, we just arrived um, and we wanted to show you something. Hi Joanne, thank you for watching, good to see you. Hi Lisa, great Hi, to yeah. see you. Hi Lisa, love Lisa, Lisa too. Um, thank you very much for watching. This is a Facebook Live, so if you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere else after the fact, um, just bear in mind that this is a Facebook Live, which is why we're saying hi to the viewers that are watching. So we are at, shall I give away the location? Go on then. We're, we're at St Mary's Church in Berkeley in Gloucestershire, um, and there are lots of stories that we need to dig into here, lots of things to look at, um, and lots of different um, interesting bits of folklore to, to uh, intrigue us here while we're here. It's a Thursday night and it's a full moon tonight and that is relevant for one of the things that we're going to tell you. Hi Sal, good to see you, thank you for watching. Hi Sal. Um, so, uh, I don't know if you can see behind us, we are, can you shine your torch on the... Tell because I'm completely um, blinded by the light. Yeah. So there's a door. There we are. There's a beautiful door behind us. We'll show you that in more detail soon. Uh, but before we go anywhere else, before we do anything else, um, we have just arrived, and upon arrival, we, I have to say we got quite excited. We did. Um, so much so it wasn't us that made the mess. It wasn't us that did this. But we want to show you something. Tell us what you think. Um, let me just turn the camera around. This is all. It's all very interesting. Let's turn this guy around. Okay, so I'm going to show you where we are. This is uh, this is the floor where we are. Not very interesting. Just a couple of steps here. We are in a graveyard. Have a little look around, guys. Let's show you um, some of the tombs that are here. Um, and this is the outside of the church. We won't be going into the church tonight, unfortunately, but we are just outside. Hi Emma, good to see you. Thank you for watching. We're still on these steps now. We have Our just got arrival, here. Um, we spotted these splodges. I don't know if you can see. Um, can you see that there, guys? We kind of thought this this looked. This looked almost good. Too, too good to be true. Not that we want anyone hurt, but and and there's a trail. Hi Darren, good to see you. Now we followed this trail um, over in this direction. And we, we started to think, gosh, I wish we'd been filming this straight off because it was quite shocking um, to see what we saw. Um, obviously, th these are some of the graves that are here um, as well. And so we, we went to try and have a look to see... So we had a look in that direction first. To see so if there's, there's nothing any, over there. an animal that's been caught or if, I mean, God forbid, someone, had, someone actually had been caught. Um, so carried on exploring, there are splodges on the floor this way uh, and starting to get slightly more excited going we may have come across someone doing a ritual or anything if we had turned up five minutes earlier and then got very very disappointed because we saw this it's clearly somebody's curry um, somebody's curry sauce that they've spilt big disappointment for us Big disappointment. We were wondering, with it being Halloween, could it be somebody playing a prank on us? And we thought, you know, who knows that we're coming here and who's who's been here doing a ritual um, and leaving evidence behind for us. But no, it's just curry. Um, never mind. Never mind. So let's turn the camera back around again. Let's start okay. this properly now. <laughs> okay. So that, yes, it was a little bit shocking right. uh, when we got here, but it's just curry sauce. So we're not going to panic about that. Um, Unless we find out it's actually a, a, actually, actually blood in the cup, but... <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. We didn't sniff it. Do you, taste, do you want to taste a little bit, see if it is? I've got food allergies, you can do it. <laughs> I don't want to catch AIDS. We won't be doing that. We won't be doing anything like that. Okay, so some of the stories that we've got for you tonight. 
my oh my this is such a good location it's so exciting ah so i think what we'll start off with is, um before we do anything else i want to tell you a little bit of something that well i was told so many times growing up i honestly don't know its original source but um it's about going around a church three times widdershins uh, for anyone who hasn't heard of widdershins before it's anti-clockwise um, the story was to go around a church three times widdershins and you should meet or summon the devil by doing bear that this. in mind bear um, that in mind now widdershins as i said is anti-clockwise and that links into uh, ritual uh, if you're going to rotate something anti-clockwise you're diminishing its power diminishing its strength if you're doing clockwise, that's a creative. And uh, increasing. Increasing. So what we're going to do, we're going to tell you one of the stories as we're going around the church, three times Widdershins, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see how far we get. Bear in mind, guys, um, it is a full moon tonight. Um, hi, Craig. Good to see you. Hey, you Craig. folks that are watching, if you, if you pop up and say hi, send us a message, say hi uh, in the comment section, and we'll say hello to you. If you've got any questions as we're doing this, fire them through. Um, we'll be looking at the screen as much as we can to answer your questions as well as we're doing this. Now, are you, are you guys okay? So just checking that you guys can see us. Hey, Matthew, good to see you. <laughs> right, okay, so I'm going to start to tell you this story about the Barclay Witch. Um, and as we do so, we're going to start walking. Let me put my torch on. Here we go. So if we're starting okay. here, this is 12 o'clock, so we need to go that way. Okay, so we need to go that way. Let's go that way then, right. So, so we come down the steps. So as, as always with these um, folklore videos that we're doing and anything else that we're doing, we are being very careful about the location. Um, I just want to say that we are very respectful. We need to go this way. Um, we're very respectful and... Um, we're very careful with where we're walking um, and what we're doing. So we're just, we might be uh, zigzagging around a little bit so that we don't walk over other people's graves, try not to, try not to disturb anything. Um, and all of the locations that we go to, some of them are ancient sites. And of course, we want to be as careful and as respectful as we possibly can be. Okay. So let me tell you about the witch. Now, apparently she was a lady who Records um, indicate this was around um, ten, around sort of 65. Ten, 1065 was the date that uh, that I found online uh, regarding this particular story, um, and we have to be completely honest with you guys and say that the church that we're walking around at the moment, Barclay Church, where we are, this is a, a more recent building than that built in the 13th so 1200s or 13th century so um, parts of it probably going back further but there was a church on this piece of land before that even records of an abbey and a monastery yeah so uh, so that is fact so it we might not be pertaining to this actual building with this story but we are talking about this actual site so we are in Barclay we're at St Mary's Barclay Church so the witch, the lady, she was um, apparently a, a very popular lady, according to one of the sources, who had lots of children. Um, in another source, it says that she wasn't so popular and that she was known for being somebody who didn't lead a very godly lifestyle. Um, however, she sent two of her children into... Um, education and into the church and into religion. One of her children became a monk and another one of her children became a nun. And it's said that the reason that she did this, the reason that she sort of pushed them into that kind of work, is because she had done a pact with the devil. The devil himself. And it was her guilt that caused her to send her children off to religious work. Now it's also said about this lady that she had a pet. And some records say it was a pet raven. Of course we love that, being ravens ourselves. Small light gone. Hang on. Um, some records say that it was a magpie. And some records say that she had a crow as a pet. We're going to go with raven tonight. 
Obviously. We love ravens. Now this lady who had this pet raven, I'm actually going to turn the camera around so you guys can see where we are. Let's see what we're looking at. Um, hi Ollie, thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll uh, you look to forward the, to you catching up later. So can see. Yes, please. Thank right. You. Okay, so for you guys to catch up, if you've been, uh, if you've just joined us, we're at St Mary's Church in Berkeley, and we're talking about the story of the lady who was known to be a witch, the Witch of Berkeley. She had a pet raven. Can we go around that way? We can do, yes, that's, that is the gutter. That's the gutter, so we that's need to go this way. So we need to go through in between here. Okay. It's actually in between the graves, not on top of them. Okay. Um, and the story goes that one day, her lovely pet raven, her lovely pet raven, either, there's two stories here, so her pet raven either flew around the room three times and died or gave out a terrified cry. And in the story where her pet raven died, she was so distraught that she wrapped up the raven like a baby in her arms and went out to where we are now, to Barclay Church, and she buried the raven with her bare hands. When she came back with muddy hands, it was said that she'd buried another one of her children. She felt so strongly about the bird. But she knew that this was a bad omen. And when the raven died, she cried out and she said, this is it, I know now. I know now that my life is going to change. It's going to turn very negative. Terrible things are going to happen. And so the lady was right. There was a knock on the door and it was a messenger. And this messenger brought the news that her eldest son and his family had all perished. Of course, the lady was extremely distraught. Bad news kept coming. <clears throat> Bad things kept happening. And eventually the lady got ill herself. And she became so ill, she was told that she wouldn't make it, that she only had a short time to live. And she called her children, her remaining children, to her bedside. And they arrived at her bedside, and the children were, the children, one was a monk and one was a nun. And at her bedside, she requested that when she died, they were to wrap her up in, in a, stag skin. a stag skin. Now she'd confessed to her children, she said to her children, I haven't led a holy life. I made a pact with the devil. And in making that pact, I've done some terrible things in my life. I haven't led a holy life. I've led a terrible life. And I need you to help me when I pass away. I, I'm so terrified of going to hell. So, so terrified of going to hell. And I need you to help me. So, of course, her children said, we'll do whatever we can. We'll do everything that we can. So her request was first of all to be wrapped in a stag skin. So her body, when she passed away, was wrapped up in a stag skin. Her next request was to be put into a stone sarcophagus, into a stone coffin. And that's what they did. They put her in a stone coffin and her request was that this coffin should be put upright inside the church. And also that this coffin should be wrapped with three very strong iron chains. So this is what they did. So they put her inside the church in her stone coffin upright with three iron chains. 
The last link on the last of those three iron chains was to be blessed with holy water and sealed. And she said, I want you to pray over my body. I want you to sing psalms over me and pray for me for three days and three nights. On the fourth day, I'd like you to bury me in the graveyard. So on the first night, her body was in a stone sarcophagus with the three chains inside this church at Barclay. And they were praying over her body and they were singing psalms. But a terrible thunderstorm broke out. And the wind was howling and the rain was lashing down and lightning struck the roof of the church, causing some of the church tiles to fall down onto the congregation and onto the people that were praying for this lady. The people here were so scared that they ran away. And while the church was left unattended, demons entered into the church and started to hack away at the first chain. And they worked very hard and they broke the first chain on the coffin. But they'd only got the first one broken by daylight. So at daylight, they ran away. And the congregation came back, saw that the first chain was broken, and they continued to pray around her coffin within this church. The second night came, and as the members of the community were praying for this lady's soul, for her to be saved, for her to be forgiven, and for her to be spared the fires of hell, inside the church, one of the candles was too close to one of the drapes, and the drape caught fire causing a huge amount of billowing smoke into the church. The smoke was so thick that the congregation had to leave. They ran out of the church and left the church again unattended at night. This time, the demons came into the church again and started working on the second of the three chains on the lady's coffin. They worked hard to break the second chain. By the time the morning came, the second chain was broken, but the third chain still remained on the lady's coffin. The congregation arrived again during the day and prayed over the coffin for the poor lady, for her soul to be saved, for her to be spared the fires of hell. Even though she had made this pact with the devil, even though she'd already sold her soul, they prayed, they sang psalms, and they did everything they could to save her. But on the third night... Again, a huge storm broke out over this church. And the thunder rumbled all around them, and the lightning struck, and the rains came down. And this time on the third night, the devil himself appeared at this church, riding a huge black horse. The sounds of the devil riding his horse into the church were so loud, so terrifying, the congregation screamed and hid and ran as fast as they could. 
the hoof print shaking this church to its very foundations. Upon this horse, great sp iron spines grew down its back. The devil himself came into the church, and it is still said that on one of the graves within this churchyard, the devil's footprint can still be seen. The devil entered the church and he said, I have come for the witch of Berkeley. Are you here, my love? Follow me. A voice answered back from the coffin. I cannot come, my lord, for I am trapped inside this coffin. And the devil replied, I will unbind you at your great loss. And with that, he broke the third chain on the coffin. He pulled out her body and he pulled the body onto the horse and it said that her body was impaled on one of the spikes that rose from the horse's back. And it said that he dragged her body out from this church on top of the horse. And it said that her screams could be heard for four miles from here. It's even said that there are finger marks from the witch while we are aware this is not the church that was there at this time, wouldn't it be convenient that there's marks like this on the <laughs> <laughs> There are marks here. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the Barclay Witch. If we had to go a bit further, we would have completed our three circuits. That's quite right, we've nearly completed our three Widdishins. Let's keep going. So just to remind you guys, we are at St Mary's Church in Berkeley. We've just told the story of the Berkeley Witch. And for those who don't know what Widdishins actually is, I explained this a bit earlier. Widdishins is anti-clockwise. It's turning around anti-clockwise. And the story goes that if you go round a church three times on the full moon, Widdishins, which we have just, <laughs> just this completed. second completed <laughs> you are supposed to meet the devil let's see if that happens okay guys. and i know i'm not looking my best this evening so when the light comes back on please be kind <laughs> <laughs> i hope you enjoyed that guys i hope you enjoyed our, our little story there um it's a story that's really well known um locally the witch of Berkeley. um it's also said that one of the, the devil's horse's hoof prints is on one of the graves. And actually, didn't we look before? We did have, have a good looked? search around. We, we never managed search. to see one. Around this way. Hang on. Let me talk to on that side. Okay. Um, we, we saw something once um, that looked a little bit like a, a, a sort of a hoof print um, on one of the graves, but um, I'm not sure about that. Really not sure. Um, so that's our first story of tonight. We have now walked around the church three times, Widdishins, and it is a full moon tonight. So maybe, maybe the devil will turn up. You never know. Any messages for him? Let us know and we'll tell him. So let's have a look at some of your, uh, some of your comments. Fantastic story. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Craig says that story got me thinking about the story I told you about. My yes, the angel meeting the devil i love that stuff we're gonna we're gonna cover more things like that as well um so hang tight because we've got more we've got more for you um so exciting so this is a really beautiful church this church actually dates um from the let me get this right 
twelve hundreds, twelve or thirteen hundreds. Um, so if you come to visit St Mary's Church in Berkeley, you're looking at a building that dates around that time. The story of the witch that we just told you, um, as far as we're aware, dates from around about 1065. 10, 10, Varying. Um, so obviously we're looking at an earlier time. There has been a church on this spot for a long time. Uh, that is known. It's in the records. Um, and there's a tower further down, just um, on the other side of the graveyard there, um, that I believe is the spot where the other church would have been. Yes. So, uh, so that's what we're looking at. The atmosphere here is pretty good. Isn't it? it is. It's definitely it's changed nice. from when we started. Yes. So um, <laughs> definitely. Now there was a number of things within that story that come across as sort of classical witchcraft. So the whole idea of the the raven, crow, or magpie, depending on what version of the story you know, that would come under something uh, being called a familiar, which I'm mm -hmm. sure we're all yeah. familiar with. Ha ha. Um, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> The whole idea of a familiar is something that we, we know when we think of a witch. You think of the black cat, you think of the toad, the owl. Mm -hmm. um, most people probably know from places like Harry Potter where they have their own pet. Um, but the whole idea of a familiar would be a, a spirit or an energy that takes the form of an animal um, that would be either subservient to the witch or a helping energy. Um, they can take many different forms. There are records of a lady in Cornwall. Um, I'm trying desperately to remember the name of the town, uh, but she kept a dried toad as her familiar. There's a case where people have obviously kept black cats, which is one of the traditional stories. Um, there's even stories of people who turned in to magpies, so that they're that that's where the, sort of the line yeah. between familiar and which gets blurred. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's even possible to create your own familiar, or in some places it might be called a, a homunculus, or even a golem, which um, you might come across as well within some of the classical stories. Um, so very, very interesting, and it is something that is genuinely connected to witchcraft. It's not something that's been made as part <coughs> of the fantasy story. It's not some right. It's not an additional. Yeah. It's not an additional thing that's that's kind of cropped up in in fairy tales. Um, it does. It does originate from actual witchcraft practices. Yes, probably the best way to put that. Um, so people are asking, are we picking anything up? Are we sensing anything here? Um, I have been here before, so um, I always like to say if I've been somewhere before because it, it helps you to, uh, when you go to a location over and over again, it's almost as if you can kind of establish a connection with the energies there. Sometimes they recognize you, sometimes they remember you, um, and it's just nice that you know you can, you can start to establish that connection. Um, I have a young lady with me at the moment. She's not the witch, <laughs> as much as I'd love to say she is. She's not. Um, but she's talking about working locally um, and particularly working the land, so um, toiling, really toiling on the land. Um, and I'm seeing her walking along with, she's got animals following her. Um, uh, she's got a couple of dogs there and a pig, uh, bizarrely, uh, following her as she, as she walks along here. Um, Fantastically, as you're saying, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but there are actually cows moving in the background as well. <laughs> They're not, I don't think they're spiritual cows, they're real cows. Um, also close to us, I believe, is a, a place where they keep dogs. So um, you might hear howling dogs and things like that. It's, that's a local thing, so don't freak out too much about that. Um, so let's have a look at some of the other... Things. Is there actual chanting there? I can hear noises behind you. Matthew is going to Salem. Jealous. You horrible awesome. person. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, that's great. Let us know how you get on there. Um, so there's no chanting going on. However, we can hear traffic a little bit. It could be that that you're hearing. Um, we're fairly close to an A road, so it, it could be that. It's possible. Um, or if you want to take the psychic route, you could also be um, potentially hearing, say, chanting from the monastery that was here in the past. It depends on which way you want to look at it. So yeah. there's potential for that. Yeah. Absolutely. There's lots of energies here. Um, often graveyards are, are fairly quiet spiritually. Um, in my experience, they tend to be quite peaceful places. You get the odd, the odd one or two spirits um, there, but uh, spirits tend to gravitate towards family or locations where they had an experience. So it would have been work or home or something like that. Um, so rather than uh, hanging around a graveyard or hanging around where they're buried, they tend to go towards the people or the places that really meant a lot to them. Um, I think 
I think you guys are maybe hearing traffic. I think that, that might be what it is. Um, so we have one more tale to tell you. Um, we also want to talk about, should, what should we talk about first? Should we talk about the, the toad? Let's, let's do the toad. Let's okay. do the toad. <laughs> okay. Another story, and this relates to actually Barclay Castle, which is just the other side of the wall, over the fence there. We are very close to Barclay Castle, um, and I, I think this, this piece of land would have been owned by um, the same person that would have owned the, the land that the church was on would have also owned the land that the castle was on as well. Yes. Um, and I think the two were, were very closely um, connected, obviously, for, for quite a long um, period of time. Um, mm. So literally over the wall, if you were to hop over the wall, you would be at Barclay Castle. The interesting thing, uh, Barclay Castle is the last remaining castle that has the family members living there that the castle was originally built for. So, uh, and it also has some fantastic stories. Um, in the 1100s, um, they discovered what they described as a toad of incredible bigness, is the actual quote, <laughs> um, <coughs> it being a foot in size, and the way they described it, it was in the dungeons, and it would have grown large on the flesh of the people that would have been imprisoned there. A flesh-eating toad. A flesh-eating toad. Um, and that can lead us on to the whole idea of uh, toads within witchcraft. Um, toads have got so many different uses um, and it really depends on where you are in the UK uh, depending on what belief you have. For example in East Anglia, uh, East Anglian witches would do a rather cruel and uh, complicated ritual to obtain something called the toad bone which was supposed to uh, convey special magical powers such as being able to talk and calm animals being able to catch and see thieves, uh, be able to predict the future. Um, if you, say, came from in the Cornish area, there's an old tradition of taking a toad through your home to bless it. Um, in various other places in the UK, um, the legend is that if a toad jumps over your foot um, at dusk, it's supposed to be uh, an omen of death. Um, but also, the toad itself is a very, very magical creature. Um, in ancient belief, places like swamps, marshes, um, deep pools of water are places where one could cross into the underworld. Uh, and this toad and frogs, these, have, these amphibious creatures, could pass freely between the two, which is most likely where the idea started of using this creature, which can freely pass between worlds, within magic. So One of my favourite magical creatures It is. is the toad. I love toads, they're great. Okay, so... Shall we go? Shall we go back round and, and do our last story of tonight? We shall do, and um, we can go that way. Let's go that way then. Go that okay, way. Let's, so let's put the torches on. I'm going <coughs> to turn you guys around again so you can see where you're going. So for those of you that have just joined us to, to catch you guys up, we are at St Mary's Church in Berkeley, in Gloucestershire, in the UK. I'm just going to show you guys around a little bit. The atmosphere here is wonderful. I love churches. I really love the, uh, the atmospheres that you get and the feelings that you get. Um, and we've got this beautiful old uh, graveyard here with lovely tombs uh, that you can see here. And some fantastic old yew trees as well. Um, yew trees being uh, synonymous with... Uh, tree of death. Um, you no. often get yew trees in churchyards, don't you? You do. They would often be um, planted around ancient sacred sites. Um, as Christianity swest, uh, swept across Europe, and especially England, um, churches were cemented on built on uh, ancient sites. Um, so some of the oldest yew trees are within Christian churchyards. Um, often with some of the stone from the sacred sites actually being used to build the church. Okay, thank you, that's fantastic. Right, so we're just making our way across. Now we are going to a specific grave now, um, and we're going to tell you another story that's connected with this graveyard, with this church. Um, 
In a minute, we'll show you the tower that's over the other side, and we believe that that's the location of the original church that was here uh, before the one that's here currently. So just going to show you guys the entrance to the church. This is the uh, main entrance now, just looking at. Um, so we're just going to show you this while we can. <coughs> I've just seen... Hi, Wendy. Good to see you. Just down here, going between the graves. Mm -hmm. um, a tall figure in black. <coughs> Excellent. Okay, that's good. So there we go. So, Wendy, for your benefit, we are at St Mary's Church in Berkeley in Gloucestershire in England. And the church dates, what you're seeing now, um, dates from the... 1300s, 1200s, sorry, 1200s. the 1200s. So here we are. We're just. Uh, uh, we've got a gap here. We can go through. Having a little look. Okay. We're dancing on anybody's grave. Yeah, we're being very. We're being as careful as we can possibly be, walking through here as respectful as we can be. You can see the full moon there, just poking above the tree. Careful there. <laughs> okay. The grave cleverly disguised as a um, flagstone. Okay. We have been here once before. I think it's this way, isn't it? Is it this one? I don't know. No, We're looking for a specific grave as we go to tell you our next story about this place. No, it's one that's very clearly marked. Okay. It's not that one in the... In the um, Is that it? That's not it either. Let's check this one. I think it's this one, you know. You could well be. Uh, okay, to the memory of... Oh, maybe it's not that one. Okay. We're at the moment we're looking for a specific grave so we can tell you our next story. It was one that was easy to walk around, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Let's have a look. Was that one over there? I don't know. Lisa says she saw a black figure to our left then. It's not this one, is it? It's one of these ones. That's is it this one? Um, wife of John. Okay. I don't think it's Anne. Well, maybe we're further this way then. I thought it was further back there. I remember it being one with printed paper. Okay, so that might be it then. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, good. Right. So, we're looking at this particular grave. Right. There's a lot of energies around us, and I do feel that um, it feels very strong at the moment. Definitely it does. It's, um, we're going to have to be very careful of that there. Look, very careful. Okay, okay so... Here we are. So the energies around here are absolutely fantastic. They, it's uh, definitely pins and needles. It is, yeah. Um, There's figures all around us. It's almost like a. It's is it's almost. Um, it feels almost ritualistic, doesn't it, in a way, that there's a big circle of people. It does, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's like there's a big circle of people, and it's also, it's also like there's all the characters that you could possibly imagine. Um, and speaking of characters. Sal, in particular, you're going to enjoy this one. Um, let's take a look at this guy. So, Max, tell us about this. Within this churchyard lies the last jester in England. He was the jester of Berkeley Castle. Now, the story goes, and I have heard this from Charles Berkeley, the, the um, current head of the family, that... The story, they don't quite know whether he was pushed or whether he fell, okay. but he was performing a trick on one of the balconies within the castle. He fell and died. 
Okay. Now the story goes that on a full moon... As in tonight? As in tonight. full moon tonight? That if you were to walk round his grave 13 times... Yeah. You're supposed to hear the jester laugh. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know, being the son of a jester... Oh, you are! Yes! Okay, let's get you on camera. Let's turn this around a little bit. For those so. of you, okay, there we go. Right, we're on. Okay. okay. For those of you who don't know, I am technically what is a son of a modern day jester. My father's been a clown for over 20 years. Um, so this should be interesting. If there's any sort of connection there, um, I think it'll be a good chance. So, what I'm going to do is walk around the grave 13 times on a full moon. I'll count. You can count. I'll get dizzy. <laughs> okay. And if I fall over, we might hear Cassie laughing. Yeah, Hopefully we'll yeah. hear the jester laughing. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do with you guys. Right, so let's see if this actually works. It is a full moon tonight. Um, I'm going to stand back a bit without falling into uh, anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can see the full moon uh, in amongst the trees there. Okay, are we ready? So, hang on, let me turn the camera around. So Max is going to walk around the jester's grave 13 times and apparently you're supposed to be able to hear the jester laugh okay max when you're ready, I'm ready. One. <laughs> this is max so the, so to answer your question wendy keep counting max to answer your question wendy this Two. is max he's my partner max raven <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm just that is you can't see very well on the camera, but that is the full moon shining through the trees there. It's a shame it doesn't show up very well on the camera. Five. I can feel energies behind me. Six. Seven. It's almost got that, um, you know, just what if you've been on a ghost hunt with us, we'll describe it at six, um, as... That's seven. Seven, whatever. Um, as almost like the, uh, the feedback on a TV screen, just before something manifests. Ah, yes, okay. And, and the energy You're picking has up on energy. Like okay. That was eight. Right, um, describe where you can see the face, Lisa. So I think you're seeing it in a mirror as as a mirror sort of image to okay. to us. Eleven. Twelve. Oh, Let us know if you hear anything, guys. It's gone very cold here. Thirteen. <laughs> Said such a rush of energy. Uh, just then, so real pins and needles. Um, You're not supposed to laugh, Max. They're listening for laughter. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, if the energy of the jester is here, if you're here, can we hear you, please? You let your voice be heard. <gasps> God, it's like walking into a freezer. Yes. Absolutely freezing. That's amazing. Yeah, like the just temperature like, difference is it's, phenomenal. It's gone icy cold that around was the tomb. Literally like walking into a wall of ice. Good grief, it's freezing. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's turn this around. See that, my breath. <laughs> yeah, that's really amazing. The difference. Literally, just from taking two steps forward. Oh my gosh, that is so cold. It's. It's it's really quite. It's 
I'm trying, I'm trying to find a way of describing it to you. This is one of those times when you wish you had a temperature gauge on you. Yeah. Um, there's a massive temperature drop. There's almost no wind at all tonight. It's actually reasonably warm for a early October evening. And the temperature here is absolutely frozen. It is so cold. It's unbelievably cold. Like... Let's just, let's step to the side and see if it... There, that's yeah. where it changes. That's sort of the boundary mark there. Good grief, that, that is really incredible temperature change. Okay, let's go back into the... Okay. Right, let's ask out again and see if we can get his <coughs> energy to come forward. The energy of the jester, if you are here, please come forwards and let yourself be known. Let us hear your voice, let us hear your laugh. See if some of the people that are watching us through this device, through this light, see if they can see you or hear you. Let's turn around this way because um, Lisa was saying that she was seeing a face between Something two um, this street so lights. Maybe behind us now she might be able to make out those faces still. So Lisa, let us know if you're still seeing those faces behind us where those lights are. I can see a row of figures. Standing um, just sort of just beyond where the torchlight. We were, yeah, where we were on the other side, so behind the camera at the moment. Yeah. Um, There's six, seven? Yeah. They're, they're all together, so they're aware of each other. Um, one of the questions that people often ask is, are spirits aware of each other? And yes, they can be. Um, this is a group that's arrived together. Um, so interestingly, this, this group has all kind of arrived at once um, and seem to be connected with the scene. Uh, with this particular graveyard in some way. You can smell the bonfire. I mean, it could just be from outside as well. What was that noise? Did you hear that? Describe it. I, I heard two noises. One, one I could explain. Was I, one I wasn't sure about. So describe the noise you were talking about. It was about. kind of a shuffling noise. Oh, okay. I figure that's not what you heard. No, I heard... Um, I heard what, what I thought was a, uh, a crow and a... Oh, okay. So actually part of, the, part of the story that we told earlier with the lady that had the raven, the pet raven, um, was that you, standing in, the, in this churchyard, you're supposed to be able to hear the crow or the raven scream and it's supposed to sound like a, her screaming. Um, so that would suggest that she's taken the... The form. The form of, of the crow or the raven. Which is uh, something I mentioned earlier about people turning into magpies, uh, turning into cats, turning going, going forth in animal form. So skin changing is one of the phrases that's used. Okay, let's have a look at some people's comments as well here again, because this is looking interesting. Um, I'm just going to scroll down. Wendy's getting the chills in California. <laughs> All <laughs> the way over there. Um... You guys are so small compared to the energies around. Okay, we're tiny. Thanks, Sally. Um, <laughs> yeah, so these figures look like they're on stilts. There's an interesting thought. Um, so, to, to address that spiritually, um, spirits can appear often how they want to appear. So sometimes you get a really tall spirit and you think, how could anybody have ever been that tall? Um, why is there a, a, you know, a seven, eight foot tall spirit here? Doesn't make sense. Um, or even more. Um, but they can show themselves any size they want to. If they've got the energy to do it, they will do it. So, you know, sometimes they look raised off the floor and other times they look really, really tall. Um, so it's something that, that they do sometimes. Sometimes they're just going to show themselves how they want to be seen. There's an awful lot of spiders here. They weren't on there when I started. <laughs> Good grief, look at the size of that one. 
Show it for Sally. She likes no, spiders. No, I don't think we will. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a look at those in a minute. Um, so the figures that are around us, are you guys still seeing them? Are you still seeing them as very tall? I'll hold this back, a, a camera back a little bit so you guys can get a... You heard that, didn't you? What did you hear? I heard footprints. Well, foot, footprints. Footsteps. 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 Um, just behind us, two very clear footsteps just around there. Um, now there are... Okay, something coming from the castle that sounded like doors closing. Um, there are so so many of them around us, so um, sort of morphing and changing in with the landscape. So it's um, it's a fantastic and very very bizarre experience to be surrounded by so many of them. It's wonderful, isn't it? Really, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's great that. Uh, what, what we wanted to do with these videos is to bring you to locations that have um, a story, that have uh, some kind of folklore attached to them or some kind of story attached to them, um, and then see what kind of energies that we can pick up on at the locations that we go to. So obviously, you know, some of the stories are going to be exaggerated. Some of them are going to be maybe even completely made up. But what we want to do is go to the locations that those stories originate at and see what we can sense there, see what we can pick up on. Um, see if there's any truth in these old legends. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and show you some of these places too. What's Lisa saying? Like someone wearing a top hat, but very tall, okay. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Should we take another little walk around? We can do, yes. I've I don't want to walk on graves. Um, we'll, well, there is a path okay. that looks to be Let's find just the path. beyond those graves there, but I can't okay. quite see because of the light on the selfie stick. I'll turn it down a bit. There we go. Ah, yes, okay. I can see what I'm doing. Right. Brilliant. Let's go. Um, we won't look at the spiders. They really are big. They're not as big as the ones in Betty Pegler. <laughs> Betty Pegler. Betty Pegler, sorry. Right, which way are we going? We go down the, uh, okay. the route, row of graves. Okay. Um, now, for those that might be interested, there are a number of Freemasons buried in this graveyard as well. Ah, oh, we now that's the energy that came through last time we were here, wasn't it? Yes. There was a, a Freemason, a gentleman who was a Freemason that came forward last time um, to, to come and chat to us, which was rather nice. And you can tell them uh, by the, well, the classic Masonic symbol on the grave. You heard that. It's really weird when that happens. When you, I, I turned to the side and I was just looking at darkness, but I saw, I saw several spirits there, and then I shone my light over there, and the, it's like the light just illuminated them. So sometimes you expect spirits to kind of fade away in, in light or, you know, in your torchlight or whatever, but occasionally you, you kind of sweep your torch around and it just illuminates them, and you can see them even more clearly, which is sometimes a little shocking. Um, but interesting. This is the tomb that um, was supposed to have the footprint, the hoof print. Okay, is it? It does. Oh, it does. Yeah. Okay. Let's well, show you it's guys that then. It's, it's like the classic look. exaggeration of uh, folklore, as it were. But it's it's a very worn, very very old grave. But you do have okay, let's get the angle, of the light, <laughs> right? It sort of looks like, yeah. It, it's difficult to see on the camera, but... Point it out with your hand. So, around here... It could be... So it could be a hoof print. See, I've been taught hoof. to... Hoof. Hoof, yeah. Hoof. I say hoof, but... <laughs> I know it's supposed to be hoof. I've been saying hoof. Okay, so guys, look how amazing this church is. Isn't it beautiful? We'll show you as much as we can. Um, in as far as we can in the darkness. Um, let's keep going. One of the other notes uh, on the story was that uh, in some of the research, uh, parallels have been drawn uh, with the, the legend that permeates throughout Europe um, of the, the wild hunt. Um, many people will... Uh, oh, you've got a skull on here. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. Many people will know the um, the story of the wild hunt. Some people will probably know it from um, its most sort of most recent appearance in uh, popular media, which was uh, in the The Witcher series of books and games. Um, but the wild hunt itself is the idea of the furious host that 
would um, ride across the sky, uh, taking spirits and energies on into the other world. Now, we could fill an entire episode with Legends on the Wild Hunt. In fact, I think we will. I think we'll, um, we will do that at some point. Um, it would be nice to do a, an episode about the Wild Hunt um, and talk about that with you guys as well. So, we found our way back to the path, thank goodness for that. <laughs> um, right, so I just want to show you the... Um, this church is almost in two parts really. We've got the, the part behind us. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well now, uh, where we've just come from. Can we get we see if we can get that, that full moon in okay, shot because it, it is fantastic but it's always the way uh, that I cannot see because of the light on the selfie stick so but um no I think it's oh there it is yeah there it is there's the moon <laughs> it's a full moon tonight which is good for us we like that we'll do a video about moon phases actually we can do yes um, we'll explain a little bit about that and their relevance um so, I just want to show you the tower um, over here. So there's a tower one side of the graveyard and the church is on the opposite side of the graveyard. Um, but I think it's, it's fact that where the tower is... Hang on, am I standing? Oh yes, we're here, okay. So where the tower is, that there used to be an older church where the tower stands. So, there are even some records of that nice. as well. Yeah, there are supposed to be... Um, an old abbey that used to be here, but we're going to show you uh, the tower. It's getting a bit windy, so bear with us, but here we are. It's quite, it is quite tall, isn't it? Can you um, do your, um, your torture, because you can zoom in with your torture as it were. There we go. get an idea. What are we looking at? Three stories? Oh, easily. Maybe four. Um, so, I'm not sure what this part is used for now. Yes, kind the of lower windows, windows are bricked off, so let's, um, yeah. it, let's go hide under the yew tree. Okay. <laughs> Stop giggling. Ah, trees. Right. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's bags of things. Okay. Oh, it's bags of, um, looks like they're doing repairs, so it looks like lime and Right. Everything. So there may be it's renovations going on. It looks like it. Let's let's go around here. This is a bit, this is a bit spooky. Gosh, there's some interesting energy here. Ugh. It's got a spider web there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've walked into a cobweb. That was horrible. Yuck. Thanks. Okay. Right. So, there we are. I hope you guys have enjoyed our stories tonight um, and I hope that you've been able to kind of get an idea of um, the, the atmosphere and the location that we're at. Um, this is a, a working church, it's St Mary's Church in Berkeley in Gloucestershire so you are able to come and, uh, come and visit, it's a working church so obviously you know, be respectful and all the rest of it. Um, it is absolutely beautiful It's inside. beautiful inside. Um, if you get to go inside, we recommend it. It really is beautiful inside as well. There are some fantastic energies inside as well. Yes, there are. I wish we could talk more about that. Um, but perhaps we'll talk about that another day. Um, we have experienced some very interesting energies here. But we'll, we'll talk more about those on another of our episodes, I think. Yes. Um, we'll cover that later. So... Thank you very much for watching. So if you are watching anywhere other than Facebook Live, um, please head on over to our Facebook page, Raven Mystic. We'd love to see you on there. Come and join our community. Uh, we deal with um, all things to do with the paranormal, witchcraft, um, and Kabbalah as well. We also have a shop, ravenmysticshop.com, if you would like to come and visit us there. That would be fantastic too. Um, I am Cassandra Raven. This is Max Raven. Thank you so much for watching. It's been great to have you guys here. I am going to put this video on YouTube at some point too, um, so you'll be able to watch again. Thank you so much. Let's just read some of the comments before we go. I don't want to ignore people. Let's see what people are saying. Emma says I don't like horses. Neither do I. I, I think we kind of missed something there. Is it <laughs> the just horses. The horses. <laughs> 
Um, uh, any are any of them? Mo- yes. Yes, they lots do. Lots of them. Lots yes, of them were wearing robes. Six or seven of them. Crane. They were all wearing yeah. robes. Yeah. Thank you for that comment. That's good. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, um, and we will see you next week where we will visit another location if the weather's good. Um, we will visit another location and talk more about some folklore. Yes. We will do some special episodes uh, regarding some of the some of the subjects that are close to our hearts. So go into a little bit more depth and hopefully get you guys to have a chance to maybe learn a few things as well. Yes. And uh, some stuff you can do at home. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We want to. We want to do that. We want to teach guys um, more about our the way that we view the world. So the way that we see things. We're, we're both quite spiritual people, um, and we're able to sense energies. We're able to to pick up on energies and and talk to spirits um, and it is a normal way of life for us um, we'd love to share that with you guys we'd love to help you to understand that as well um, and we'd love you to join our community raven mystic on facebook twitter and instagram <laughs> so come along and join us join the community everybody is welcome thank you very much for watching guys see you soon bye thank you bye